Hi guys, it's Kirsten from WVIA, and I'm also a certified teacher K through 12 in both Pennsylvania and New Jersey. So today we're gonna to talk about the nature program on beavers. And so we're gonna do a little extension activity in terms of that particular show. We hope you always enjoy nature programming. It's wonderful to learn about all the wildlife and nature that this country has to offer. Um, but today we're gonna to focus on one particular animal and that is the beaver. Now we'll talk about some indigenous animals to Northeastern Pennsylvania, but I wanna focus on the beaver because fortunately, as you can probably tell from my home, uh, it is quite rustic. So we uh, live in the country and there's lots of wildlife. Now, as far as the wildlife in Pennsylvania, we have quite a few variations, but uh, like I said, we're gonna focus on the beaver. And so what we're gonna do first is we're gonna take a look at some uh, slides having to do with just the basic biology of the beaver uh, to kind of take it just a step further than the nature program. And then we're gonna actually go outside and take a little walk to see some beaver habitats and uh, uh, other interesting things. So uh, let's get started. So today in relation to the nature program on beavers, we're going to look at the northeastern Pennsylvania beaver, which is very specific to our region. Uh, so let's get started. First of all, did you know that the beaver is actually a rodent? That was actually news to me. So the beaver is North America's largest rodent, and they are found through Pennsylvania with the highest concentration in the glaciated northwestern and northeastern counties. So for us, for all intents and purposes, we are the northeastern counties, so we have an abundance of beavers in our region. So they use branches, muds, rocks, they build dams and lodges on streams and creeks and along the edges of liver, rivers and lakes. Now, interestingly enough, later on in this lesson, we're gonna take a walk outside and we're gonna see the habitat for beavers that exist around uh, creeks and ponds. Now, beavers are actually very shy creatures and they are mainly nocturnal, meaning they come out at night but those interested in catching a glimpse of a beaver may get lucky by staking out a beaver pond or creek area in the early morning and near sundown. Now the biology of the beaver is pretty specific. Adult beavers weigh 40 to 60 pounds on average and grow up to 40 inches long. Now really think about that. 40 to 60 pounds is a pretty hefty size. Beavers weighing in excess of 70 pounds have been recorded in Pennsylvania. Now that's a big beaver. They have blunt heads, short necks and legs, and very stocky bodies. So if you look at the photo uh, off to the side, you'll see that this, the beaver is a pretty stocky, firm creature. It's got some girth to it. Their coat is glossy tan to dark brown. Um, and paler below. So up above, they're gonna have the glossy tan, dark brown, and then as you go lower, uh, underneath they are paler brown. The beaver pelage consists of dense underfur covered with longer guard hairs. The thick pelt and deposits of body fat insulate the animal and allow it to remain in the water many hours at a time. So you will see beavers, you could actually see beavers multi-seasons uh, and certainly the cold weather isn't going to deter them from jumping in the water and, and doing some swimming. Now the beaver tail is an interesting feature. It's trowel shaped and eight to 12 inches long, roughly. It's about five or six inches wide. So it's a pretty large tail. And although the picture off to the side isn't the best picture, you can kind of see that that's a very unique tail. Uh, many of us have dogs and cats and they have a very uh, common looking tail, but the beavers is long and it's trowel shaped. So um, that's, that's pretty unique. It's also scaly and has a leathery covering. So you're not gonna see fur on a tail. You're gonna see a leather, leathery covering on that tail. And when this fur bear swims, it uses its tail as a propeller or a rudder. We're gonna talk about that later on in the lesson, but when you see a beaver swimming, um, and maybe go online, there's some resources that are connected to the nature program on, be on beavers. Take a look at how the beaver swims. It really uses the tail 
to um, propel it through the water. Now that tail also supports a beaver when it sits erect or gnaws on a tree on dry land. So it supports it by balancing it. So it'll use it kind of like a stake or uh, as something to lean against. A sharp slap of the tail on the water is a signal warning other beavers of danger. So if there's a beaver and he sees a uh, uh, some sort of animal that could be of danger, it's gonna slap the tail on the water to send that warning call out. So that's a signal. Uh, tail slapping, although a signal of danger, it's also a diving aid that gives a beaver extra propulsion to tip its body down for descent and may not always be intended to be a danger signal. So that's, that's worthy of note as well. Now, let's talk about beaver feet. Yeah, they really do matter. A beaver's front feet are remarkably dexterous. Now, if you look, um, it's interesting, they look, those, those feet, those front feet look really tiny, but they have these really long claws. And these claws are used for digging and handling food and of course working on their dams or their lodges. The hind feet are broad and webbed between the toes. So they propel the animal through the water. So it is definitely, when you look at a beaver, you see the hardworking hands and then the webbed feet. So it's interesting because the beaver lives this, um, this life of on land and in the water. And believe it or not, their feet uh, really show that, demonstrate that. The second claw from the outside on each hind foot is double or split and is used for grooming. So, hey, those beavers like to look nice and so they use their claw uh, to make sure that they're uh, handsome and beautiful as ever. Now, beaver eyesight. The reason I put who's there is because their vision is really weak, but their hearing and sense of smell are incredibly good, very acute. And so oftentimes in nature, you'll see that animals, when they have a weak sense, the other senses are gonna pick up and uh, compensate for that. So because the vision is poor, their hearing and smell are very, very good. Most food for a beaver is located by smell. And we want to consider also that beavers are very vulnerable to predators on land, but relatively safe in water. So even though they can't see real well, they can, they know where the water is. They can smell the uh, animals approaching. They can smell that there might be danger in the area. And then to get to water uh, is their safe haven. Interestingly enough, a beaver can stay submerged up to 15 minutes in the water. So if it's going to jump in the water and outrun or outpace some other uh, creature that's, uh, that's a danger to it, it can actually be underwater for up to 15 minutes. That's pretty amazing. Now their membrane valves seal the ears and the nostrils from water while it's submerged, so that helps. Okay, we hope you found that interesting in terms of all of the information with regarding the beaver. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a walk. Uh, we're gonna go outside and take a look at beaver's natural habitat. Unfortunately, it's during the day. So as you know, beavers are rather nocturnal. So I did not have any luck in terms of finding a beaver for me to film. But we got a good look at some dens, uh, lodges as they're called, and the beaver dam. So let's go ahead and go outside and take a look at what we see. So as we've learned, beavers typically eat only vegetable matter with their front teeth being ever growing and thus being consistently sharp. As you can see from this video, this is a prime location for the beaver in terms of habitat because of all of the bark and twigs and different trees that they can eat and maintain their diet. Beavers usually fell trees so they can get to higher, newer, and better growth for eating. So they're going to find trees such as this and take down the branches. As you can see, there's probably been some beaver activity here where they collect the branches to get to higher ground for better vegetation. Now, they fell trees within 200 feet of the water's edge. So we're here, look at these little tree branches that have probably been felled because of a beaver, and it's right along the water's edge. 
Now, they build on streams and creeks just like this, and certainly this is instinctive behavior. So they do this quite naturally rather than learn behavior. Uh, and when we talk about beavers, we cannot help but think about the dams that they can create. So I'm gonna go over to this other side of my creek, and you'll see that when the beavers fell the trees, they oftentimes will cut them into small pieces and create dams. These dams are going to be um, partly for their home. It's also of just tree debris. And while a dam may hold a, a sizable pond back, in this case, they have not stopped the flow of water with the creek, although they are diverting it to the two edges on the outside. So this is an example of a beaver dam from just fell pieces of wood from their, um, from their vegetation. What's interesting about the beaver dams that they create is that it creates a hole for which the beaver can reside, kind of like a castle has a moat. In this case, the beaver has a location for a home and perhaps they tuck down inside. They might um, have a different area a little further on, but regardless, the dam prevents the water from being in the way of the beaver in terms of the habitat or the home that, that it creates. As you can see, this particular beaver dam has some height to it. I'm not sure if you can see, but if you look really closely, you can see that there is some height to it. Typically for shelter and rearing young, beavers construct lodges where possible. And these dome-shaped islands of sticks and logs are plastered with mud. In this particular case, we don't see a lot of mud or any sort of, of uh, material such as that, but these sticks have been pretty um, well lodged into place and the beaver is clearly creating some height to that den. A lodge's interior compartment may be up to five feet high with a small air hole at the top. I think if you look really carefully, you can maybe even see the air hole uh, up at the top, perhaps. Um, but that small air hole provides uh, the lodge and some warmth and, of course, the flow of air for the young if they are actually raising the young within the beaver home or the lodge, as they call it. When it freezes in the winter, interestingly enough, uh, it actually prevents any predators that might come upon it. So that's an interesting. The entrance to the lodge, whether it's on the bank or in the middle of a creek as it is here, uh, is usually below the water level. So the beavers are gonna go into this particular home from in front of the lodge, as you can see there. So they would crawl up in there and perhaps reside. Um, now, that is, of course, when the den is dry and above water. If there's a significant rainfall, you'll see that this particular uh, dam might get overflowed with water, and of course, they'll have to relocate or rebuild this particular dam uh, in that event. Beavers aren't the only animals that call cricks and ponds home. I'm going to show you another example, not necessarily of the animal, but of the habitat that an animal can live in. When we look at ponds, obviously there's lots of nooks and crannies that animals can hide in to protect themselves from predators. In this situation, we have some rock formations here. And although it looks pretty simple, these rock formations actually are full of little crevices under which these animals can reside. In this case, these are perfect for snakes and other small rodents that aren't afraid to get near water. And of course, the beavers as well, uh, moles and even uh, field mice, etc. This way, they're out of sight from different birds of prey, such as the hawks and eagles that typically fly overhead. We've talked about the indigenous uh, animals that live in northeastern Pennsylvania, such as the beaver and the mole, uh, porcupine, etc. Here's another example of a home built from just raw materials uh, on the backside of a pond. It looks like just felled branches, maybe even some weeds, but upon closer look, you can actually see that there's a hole and that's actually the entrance to some sort of small lodge. Now, what animal is using this particular lodge as their home? I have no idea. 
and I'm not going to get too close because we don't want anything coming out at me. But what's interesting is there is a nice opening to this particular lodge and it does provide some warmth uh, and security from any predators that may be passing overhead if this particular animal is rather small. But when we talked about the beaver lodge, obviously when we talk about using raw materials and building some height with an opening, here's something that's uh, at the water's edge. So you can actually see the creek is actually right there and there's actually a pond not too far. However, in this case, this particular lodge is off to the side. Okay. Now I'm a little ways up on the mountain from the pond and the creek. But what I'd like you to look at is the scenery and maybe you can find where an ideal home might be for any sort of animal that lives up here in this, in this region, in this area. I'm looking at a few of these rock formations and thinking that they provide really nice cover. Now I'm not gonna get too close because again, I'm not sure what might actually be calling home to some of these rock formations. But if you look at the rock straight ahead of us, there's quite a big opening. What's interesting is that not only can beavers and, and mice and snakes find perhaps their home in something like that that's not far from the water's edge, but it can also be a den for small coyote um, and porcupine, perhaps other animals of that nature. But like I said, I'm not gonna get too close to that, but I just wanted you to see that nature has a way of creating some nice nooks and crannies for the different animals to find shelter and perhaps some warmth. It looks like it might rain any minute. So as you can see, the sky is looking pretty overcast. So they can actually tuck into a small area like that for shelter. According to the Pennsylvania Game Commission, we have quite a few species present in Northeastern Pennsylvania. We have the Allegheny wood rat, bats and beavers, black bear, blackbirds, blue jays, bobcats, and that's just to name the A's and the B's. There's also otter and possum, porcupine, shrews, diving ducks, doves, thrushes, wild turkey, and white-tailed deer. Among other things, there's also a variety of small birds and animals that can call a tree trunk like this one home. What animals do you think might call this home? As we can see, there's lots of little holes and crevices for your various animals to, to call their den uh, and even to seek shelter in case of rain, which looking at the sky, I'm thinking it might be raining soon. But as you can see, this is a great spot for maybe small mice or the rodents, even small birds might burrow in. And of course your, your average ant or termite as well head back to take a look at a few more animals and learn about their habitats in northeastern Pennsylvania. I want to show you something that I think is really cool. A lot of times there's a lot of history in the woods of Pennsylvania and on this particular stretch of land we have what I affectionately call the old machinery burial ground. So I thought that was pretty neat. If you look carefully you can see that the it looks as though the truck is coming right out of the ground. And really, it looks like it's rising right out of the ground. But what we have here is probably old machinery from when this was a working farm and it was just left here. You can see the big wheels and some of the machinery. Now, that's a lesson for another time, historical farm equipment, but I just thought it was neat to see what is in someone's backyard. We're taking a look at this beaver den one more time before we go back to our lesson. I'm wondering how many beaver do you think could live in a den of that size? So I'm going to stand up and walk around it a little bit. I wonder if it would be two, maybe three, or perhaps a mother and its young. Whether your number is low or high, I think remains to be seen in terms of truth of it, but it is neat to look at. Perhaps one day I'll actually get to film the beaver that owns this particular dam. 
Okay, did you enjoy that walk through the scenery in northeastern Pennsylvania? Uh, although we didn't get to see a beaver, it was probably pretty interesting to see the landscape, and I bet that truck was really interesting for you too. Um, one final note, we want to talk about obviously beavers uh, with regards to the PBS program Nature Beavers. Um, and we are enjoying hearing about the beaver that's indigenous to Pennsylvania, but there's actually lots of animals that are indigenous to Pennsylvania. According to the Fish and Game Commission here in the state of Pennsylvania, uh, there are quite a few animals that call this region their home. Um, so I'm just gonna read a few so that you uh, can maybe think about looking for them or at least researching them. Remember, go to PBS Learning Media and you can look up many of these animals and learn about them. You can see media clips, you can watch movie clips, and you can actually do little activities uh, to be more familiar with them. So as far as Northeastern Pennsylvania, which is our region, uh, here are a few animals that call it home. So we have the Allegheny wood rat, the bat, the beaver, the black bear, uh, blue jays, bobcats. And remember what I said on our walk, that's just the A's and the B's. There's also Canadian geese, chickadees, chimney swifts, chipmunks, cottontail rabbits. Uh, we have coyote and of course, crows and ravens, uh, doves, eagles, ospreys. We have hawks and elk. We even have elk. Uh, I'm from Northern Wisconsin, so I've seen the elk. I haven't seen any elk here in Pennsylvania, but that doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. Uh, maybe we'll have to keep our eye out for that. Uh, there's also fishers, fisher cats, and fly catchers. Maybe look that one up, see what that is. We have fox, we have herons, we have kingfishers, we have possums and otters and owls. We have puddle ducks. I wonder what the difference between a duck and a puddle duck is. Uh, we have rails and raptors and shrews and sparrows. We have squirrels. Of course we knew that, but did you know we also have flying squirrels? That I didn't know. And that I would like to see. Uh, we have thrushes and we have weasels, white-tailed deer, wild turkey, woodchucks. We have woodcocks, wood ducks, woodpeckers, I just saw a pileated woodpecker the other day, so that was pretty neat. And then wood warblers and wrens. So obviously there are lots of animals in northeastern Pennsylvania. So get outside and take a look. Go to PBS Learning Media and learn more about them. And we hope to see you next time on our Learn at Home. Have a great day, guys.